What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. Today, we'll hear Kino read a story about a boy who watches too much television. You've gotten square eyes. Charlie rushed to the bathroom. Mom, they are square, and so is everything else. And Jeff Altman reads a book about a young turtle who's afraid of the dark. He was afraid of crawling into his small, dark shell. And so Franklin the turtle dragged his shell behind him. Our last story is an American Indian version of Cinderella, read by Wes Studi. Then something stepped inside. Though they heard breathing, the two sisters couldn't see a thing. And now, the time is right. The books are hot. We'll hear fine stories and enjoy them a lot. Storytime is a production of KCET and is made possible by a gift from Helen and Peter Bing so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Now, join Kino and his friend Mara at her place for story time. <sighs> I am pushed, pooped, beat, frazzled, and fatigued. In one word, I'm tired and exhausted. That was more than one word, wasn't it? <sighs> Why are you so tired? Well, see this piece of paper right here that I got mm -hmm. at school? Well, it says that if I can read ten books, in 10 days, they will hang my picture in the library and put a gold star under it. Oh, this should be easy for you, Kino. You love to read stories and books. I know, I know, but I forgot all about it, and today is the last day to read them. A and I read these seven here already, and my eyes are worn out, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Kino, why don't you read this book? It's also about a boy who's having trouble with his eyes. The boy with square eyes? Mm hmm Hmm. What happened to him? Well, do you like to watch television? Oh. Oh, yeah, you bet. You bet. Why? Well, read it. You'll see why. Oh, and also keep one of your tired eyes on the pictures. They change during the story. Oh, they do, huh? Mm -hmm. Gee, I want to see this. The boy with square eyes. The words and the pictures are by Juliet and Charles Snape. <clears throat> Charlie watched television all day long. It did not matter what was on. Charlie would watch it. You'll get square eyes, his mom said. Lunch called Charlie's mom. Can I have mine in front of the TV, asked Charlie. No, come to the table. Charlie went to the kitchen and sat down. Mom, Mom, said Charlie. The kitchen looks funny. Gee. Everything looks square, said Charlie. The food does too. Square plate, square hot dogs, square french fries, square peas, and square tomatoes. Charlie's mom looked at the plate. Then she looked at Charlie. Now you've done it, she cried. Done what, asked Charlie. You've gotten square eyes. Charlie rushed to the bathroom. Mom, they are square, and so is everything else. To the doctor, said Charlie's mom. Let's hope she can straighten things out. But I don't need straightening out, said Charlie. I need rounding out. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Charlie stared at the street as they waited for the bus. Things were just not looking right. Very odd, very peculiar, said the doctor. Very square, Charlie started to cry. Does he read books, asked the doctor. No, said Charlie's mom. Does he go out and play? No, said Charlie's mom. Does he draw pictures? No, said Charlie's mom. Does he ever look up at the sky and wonder why? No, said Charlie's mom. He only watches television. Hm. 
Televisionitis, said the doctor. <laughs> there is only one cure to exercise your eyes. Huh. They thanked the doctor and went out. The first thing we'll do is visit an art gallery. Looking at pictures will help, said Mom. Well, she asked when they got there. I'm not sure, said Charlie. Then they went to the library. Charlie chose a few books. Any better, Mom asked. A little, said Charlie. After the library, they went to the park. Charlie looked at the trees and the birds. Then Charlie's mom bought him a hamburger. Feeling okay, she asked. Hmm, said Charlie. When they got home, Charlie's mom unplugged the TV set. No more until those eyes are back to normal, she said. Aw, Mom, I don't have anything to do, Charlie said. Read a book, do a puzzle, draw a picture, watch the goldfish, look at the sky. So that is just what Charlie did. He read a book, he did a puzzle, he drew a picture, he looked at the goldfish, and finally, he looked at the sky. Suddenly, Charlie felt strange. Questions began to come into his mind. He just couldn't hold them inside any longer. Hey, Mom, he asked, how far away is the moon? What are clouds made of? How many people are in this city? Why does the world spin around? Charlie's mom rushed into the room. What's the matter with you, she cried. Then, she stopped. Charlie, your eyes, they're back to normal. Great, said Charlie. But he never saw things quite the same way again. Do you think Charlie watched as much television after um, his eyes got round again? Oh, never, never. That boy learned his lesson, I can tell you that much. What makes you say that? Because, uh, that happened to me once. Yeah, that's right. Except it was from looking at my dog dog too much. I started to grow hair in my eyes. Really? What did you do? Nothing. The hair in my eyes just went away. <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky for you. And Kino, you are now one step closer to your goal now that you have finished another book. All right. Oh. oh, Story Fiesta sounds coming through loud and clear. It's the right time, and my amigos are here. Well, hi, everybody. Make yourselves comfortable. We'll be right down, okay? Six, seven, eight. Let me see. Just two more books to go. I just might make it. Kino, I was wondering, if someone else reads you a story, does that count towards your goal? Oh, yep, yep, yep. It counts, but only if I pay attention. <laughs> Good, because I have a fun story, and I've invited Jeff to come and read it. Oh, extra super cool. That would almost put me over the top. Let's do it. Hi, Kino. Hi, Mara. Hi, everybody. Hey, Hi, Jeff. Hi. Hey, what's the story, man? <laughs> Welcome to story time. Oh, my pleasure. What are we going to read today? Oh, I have picked a wonderful book. It's called Franklin in the Dark. And Jeff, if you read it, we'll be helping Kino meet his goal of reading 10 books in 10 days and getting his picture displayed in the library. Well, that's great, Kino. But, you know, I'll bet you could read more than 10 books in 10 days. Well, yeah, I could, except that, you see, I forgot all about it. And today's the last day. We should get right to work. Today's book is called Franklin in the Dark, and it was written by Paulette Bourgeois, and it was illustrated by Brenda Clark. I want to ask you a question. Have any of you here ever been scared of the dark before? Yeah, me too. I can remember. Can you remember? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happened to Franklin. How was he scared? Franklin could slide down a riverbank all by himself. He could count forwards and backwards. He could even zip zippers and button buttons. But Franklin was afraid of small, dark places. And that was a problem because Franklin was a turtle. He was afraid of crawling into his small, dark shell. And so Franklin the turtle dragged his shell behind him. <laughs> Every night, Franklin's mother would take a flashlight and shine it into his shell. See, she would say, 
There's nothing to be afraid of. She always said that. She wasn't afraid of anything. But Franklin was sure that creepy things, slippery things, and monsters lived inside his small, dark shell. So Franklin went looking for help. He walked until he met a duck. Uh, excuse me, duck. I'm afraid of small, dark places, and I can't crawl inside my shell. Can you help me? Mm, maybe, quacked the duck. You see, I'm afraid of very deep water. When nobody is watching, I wear my water wings. Would my water wings help you? No, said Franklin. I'm not afraid of water. So Franklin walked and walked until he met a lion. Excuse me, lion, but I'm afraid of small, dark places, and I can't crawl inside my shell. Can you help me? Maybe, roared the lion. You see, I'm afraid of great, loud noises. Sometimes, when nobody is looking, I wear my earmuffs. Would my earmuffs help you? No, said Franklin. I'm not afraid of great, loud noises. So Franklin walked and walked until he met a bird. Excuse me, bird. I'm afraid of small, dark places, and I can't crawl inside my shell. Can you help me? Well, maybe, chirped the bird. I'm afraid of flying so high that I get dizzy and fall to the ground. Sometimes, when nobody is looking, I pull my parachute. Would my parachute help you? No, said Franklin. I'm not afraid of flying high and getting dizzy. So Franklin walked and walked and walked until he met a polar bear. Excuse me, polar bear. I'm afraid of small, dark places, and I can't crawl inside my shell. Can you help me? Maybe, growled the bear. You see, I'm afraid of freezing on icy cold nights. Sometimes when nobody is looking, I wear my snowsuit to bed. Would my snowsuit help you? No, said Franklin. I'm not afraid of freezing cold icy nights. Franklin was tired and hungry. He walked and walked until he met his mother. Oh, Franklin, I was so afraid you were lost. You were afraid? I didn't know mothers were ever afraid, said Franklin. Well, did you find some help, she asked. No, I met a duck who was afraid of deep water. Mmm, she said. And then I met a lion who was afraid of great loud noises. Mm-hmm, she said. And then I met a bird who was afraid of falling and a polar bear who was afraid of freezing. Oh, she said, they were all afraid of something? Hmm, said Franklin. It was getting late. Franklin was very tired and very hungry. They walked and walked until they were home. Franklin's mother gave him a cold supper and a warm hug, and then she sent him off to bed. Good night, dear, she said. Well, Franklin knew what he had to do. He crawled right inside his small, dark shell. He was sure he saw creepy things, slippery things, and a monster, but he said a brave, good night. And then, when nobody was looking, Franklin, the turtle, turned on his nightlight. <laughs> and that's Franklin in the dark. What did you guys think? Did you did that story sound at all like you? Did, did you ever have an experience like that? Yeah. yeah. I did. You I did. did. I was oh. praying in the dark and my mom said, go to bed, it's time to go to bed. And I was like, why? It's, what time is it? I don't want to go to bed. Oh. When did... my mommy put me to bed, um, the first time I was, when she cut off the light, yeah. I told her to cut on my little light. Did she cut on the little light? She did. That's exactly what Franklin did. He cut on his little light because that's what he needed to sleep. Because I was scared of the dark. Did you notice that every everybody in the story, all the characters, all the animals in the story, had something they were afraid of? Yeah. And they always had to do that something. That's right. They always had something that would help them. Dark. I remember when I was little, I used to have bad dreams and stuff like that. And I'd, cr I I'd call, call, I'd call, out, call out for my mom or my dad. I'd say, Mom, Dad, I, I just had this terrible dream. And I have a little girl who's three years old. And sometimes she comes running out of her room and she says, Oh, there's a monster in here. And I say... Honey, there's no monster for real. And she says, well, I know it's That's not true. real, but I still think it's real, but it helps to talk about it. 
Jeff? Yes? M my little sister, Mariana, is afraid of sleeping with the bedroom door closed. A and I'm afraid, too, but, but of something else. What are you afraid of, Kino? I'm afraid I'm running out of time for my ten stories. Oh, oh, well, well, you, you have, you have nine. Kino, yeah. if we all go on a picture book visit, huh? you'll have ten. Oh, yeah, well, let's go. <laughs> I hope yeah. it's a good one. Vamos, amigos. Hey, it's Wes reading a story in a garden. Lucky, my tenth story. So this is like a Cinderella story with Indians. Mm. The Rough Face Girl is written by Rafe Martin, illustrated by David Shannon. Once long ago, there was a village by the shores of Lake Ontario. Off from the other wigwams of this village stood one great, huge wigwam. Painted on its sides were pictures of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and other animals. And inside this wigwam, there was said to live a very great, rich, powerful, and supposedly handsome, invisible being. However, no one could see him except his sister, who lived there too. Many women wanted to marry this invisible being, but his sister said, Only the one who can see him can marry him. Now, in this village, there lived a poor man who had three daughters. The two older daughters were cruel and hard-hearted, and they made their youngest sister sit by the fire and feed the flames. When the burning branches popped, the sparks fell on her. In time, her hands became burnt and scarred. Her arms, too, became rough and scarred. Even her face was marked by the fire, and her beautiful long black hair hung ragged and charred. And those two older sisters laughed at her, saying, Ha! You're ugly, you rough-faced girl. And they made her life very lonely and miserable indeed. One day, these two older sisters went to their father and said, Father, give us some necklaces. Give us some new buckskin dresses. Give us some pretty beaded moccasins. We're going to marry the invisible being. So the father gave them these things. Dressed in their finest, the two girls marched through the village. All the people pointed and stared. Ooh, look at those beautiful girls, they said. Surely, they shall marry the invisible being. And if those two girls were proud and hard-hearted before, they were even prouder now. They walked haughtily through the village. At last, they came to the wigwam of the invisible being. And there was his sister, waiting. Why have you come? she asked. We want to marry the invisible being, they answered. That's why we're here. Well, if you want to marry my brother, she replied, you have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen the invisible being? Well, of course we have seen him, they insisted. Can't you see how pretty we are? Can't you see the beautiful clothes we wear? Oh, yes. Anyone can tell that we've truly seen the invisible being. All right, she said quietly. If you think you've seen him, then tell me. What's his bow made of? And suddenly her voice was swift as lightning and strong as thunder. His bow, they stammered. His uh, bow. We know, we know. But turning desperately to one another, they whispered, what shall we say? Let's say it's the oak tree. So they said, it's the great oak tree. No, said the sister of the invisible being. No. Oh, she saw at once how they lied. Tell me, she continued, if you think you've seen my brother, the invisible being, then what's the runner of his sled made of? Uh, we know, we know, cried those two sisters. But whispering feverishly again, they wondered, what shall we say? What shall we say? Let's say it's the green willow branch. 
No, said the sister when she heard. No, you have not seen my brother. Now go home. Just test us fairly, they exclaimed. We've seen him. Just don't ask us all these silly questions. All right, said the sister of the invisible being. Come with me. And she took them back to the great wigwam and sat them in the seats furthest from the entrance, the guest seats. Soon, they heard footsteps coming along the path. Then something stepped inside. Though they heard breathing, the two sisters couldn't see a thing. Suddenly, a great bow and a beaded quiver of arrows appeared in the air and were set down. But though those two girls sat there, their eyes wide, all through the night, they never saw a thing more. And in the morning, they had to go home, ashamed. The next day, the rough-faced girl went to her father and said, Father, may I please have some beads? May I please have a new buckskin dress and some pretty moccasins? I am going to marry the invisible being, for wherever I look, I see his face. But her father sighed. Daughter, he said, I'm sorry. I have no beads left for you, only some little broken shells. I have no buckskin dress, and as for moccasins, all I have left are my own old, worn, cracked, and stretched out pair from last year. They're much too big. But she said, whatever you can spare, I can use. So he gave her these things. Then she found dried reeds, and taking the little broken shells, she strung a necklace. She stripped birch bark from the dead trees and made a cap, a dress, and leggings. Then with a sharp piece of bone, she carved in the bark pictures of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and animals. She went down to the lake shore and soaked the moccasins in the water until they grew soft. And she molded them to her feet, but they were still too big. And they flap, flap, flapped like duck's feet as she walked. Then all of the people came out of their wigwams. They pointed and stared. Look at that ugly girl, they laughed. Look at her strange clothes. Hey, 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 go home, you ugly girl. You will never marry the invisible being. But the rough-faced girl had faith in herself. She had courage. She didn't turn back. She just kept walking right through the village. As she walked, she saw the great beauty of the earth and skies spreading before her. saw in these things the sweet yet awesome face of the invisible being. At last, she came to the lake shore just as the sun was sinking behind the hills, and the many stars came glittering out like a fiery veil in the darkening sky overhead. And there, standing by the water's edge, was the sister of the invisible being, waiting. Now, the sister of the invisible being was a wise woman. When she looked at you, she didn't just see your face or your hair or clothes. No, when she looked at you, she could look right in the eyes and she could see all the way down to your heart. And she could tell if you had a good, kind heart or a cold, hard, and cruel one. And when she looked at the rough-faced girl, she saw at once that Though her skin was scarred, her hair burnt, her clothes strange, she had a beautiful, kind heart. And so she welcomed her, dearly saying, Ah, my sister, why have you come? And the rough-faced girl replied, I have come to marry the invisible being. Ah, said the sister very gently now, if you want to marry him, have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen my brother, the invisible being? And the rough-faced girl said, yes. All right, then, said the sister. If you have seen him, tell me, what's his bow made of? 
And the rough-faced girl said, His bow? Why, it is the great curve of the rainbow. Ah, exclaimed the sister in excitement. Tell me, she asked, if you have seen my brother, the invisible being, what's the runner of his sled made of? And the rough-faced girl, looking up into the night sky, said, the runner of his sled? Why, it is the spirit road, the milky way of stars that spreads across the sky. Ah, cried the sister in wonder and delight. You have seen it. Come with me. And taking the rough-faced girl by the hand, she led her back to the great wigwam and sat her in the seat next to the entrance, the wife's seat. Then they heard footsteps coming along the path. Closer and closer. The entrance flap of the wigwam lifted up and in stepped the invisible saw her sitting there, he said. At last, we have been found out. Then, smiling kindly, he added, and oh, my sister, but she is beautiful. And his sister said, yes. The sister of the invisible being then gave the rough-faced girl the finest of buckskin robes and a necklace of perfect shells. Now, bathe in the lake, she said, and dress in these. So the rough-faced girl bathed in the waters of the lake. Suddenly, all the scars vanished from her body. Her skin grew smooth again, and her beautiful black hair grew long and glossy as a raven's wing. Now, anyone could see that she was indeed beautiful. But the invisible being and his sister had seen that from the start. Then, at last, the rough-faced girl and the invisible being were married. They lived together in great gladness and were never parted. Yes! I did it! Ten stories under my belt. Hmm. But the most important thing is, did you enjoy the books? Oh, yes, yes. A big resounding yes! It was tough, but fun. Well, I guess it wasn't all that tough. Well, of all those books that you read, are there any you'd like to recommend to our friends at home? Oh, you betcha. Well, one is Little Toot. It's about a tugboat that's afraid of the ocean and has to rescue a big ship. Mm. It's really exciting stuff. Well, I found this really good book of poems written by Jeff Moss, and it's called The Butterfly Jar. They are short little poems for kids of any age, and some of them are very funny. Well, now I'm afraid it's time to go. You're afraid, Mara? Oh, it's just a saying, Kino. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Jeff, and thank all of you for coming to Storytime. Please come again, and until then, keep, keep a, a story in your heart. Anyangi Gasayo. Anyangi Gasayo. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that, that means goodbye, friends, in Korean. <laughs> Today's storytime books are The Boy with Square Eyes, Franklin in the Dark, The Rough Faced Girl, Little Toot, and The Butterfly Jar. You can find these and other books at your local library or bookstore. Storytime has been made possible by a gift from Helen and Peter Bing.